Hey everybody, it's Kevin from 3D Printed Props and it is October and that means it's Halloween. So I decided to work on a Halloween inspired build. That's right, this creepy doll next to me, Annabelle herself, this is what I decided to do for the video today. So I love horror movies. I've got a subscription to Shudder. I've talked about this before. I can't get enough of horror movies. And some of my favorite horror movies that are out right now are the Conjuring movies. I love all the movies in that universe. You know, the, the Conjurings, the Annabelle movies, the Nun. If it's in that world, I dig it. And of course, Annabelle is my favorite. So I decided that I really wanted to bring, you know, that doll to life, so to speak. Not too much to life, we've seen what she can do. But I wanted to print this thing out and really create my own Annabelle doll. So I had an artist work on some files for my site. And yeah, that's right. You can actually head over to 3dprintedprops.com and pick up the files to print out your own Annabelle doll. So now printing out all the pieces and parts to this is the easy part. The fun part, and a little bit of the hard part, is actually putting them all together, trying to think of how you're gonna get all of these different materials to work as one unit, one doll. And that's what I did and what I wanna show you. So let's go behind the fake wall and let me show you how I worked on this Annabelle build. So we're gonna go ahead and give Annabelle a coat of primer. And I use this Rust-Oleum 2-in-1 fillable sandable primer because it lets you really get in there and make the prints nice and smooth. And I'm just gonna give them both some nice two or three coats and bring it back downstairs. You can see I've got a huge layer line here. I added some resin in afterwards and I think it caused that I was running out. So, uh, and of course there's some uh, supports right there, some support things. Make sure you wear a mask because this creates all kinds of dust. I start with an 80 to knock down the really, really high stuff, then go to a 120, then a 220, then a 320. And again, I'm going to start with an 80 here, and you can see how that 80 is really aggressive and it gets that right off of there. But you have to remember to go up those grits to smooth out all the sanding that the sandpaper causes, and then of course wash before you do any more prime because you've got that dust. Now, this I actually did as a test print, but it ended up working out. That's why it is so rough. So I'm actually gonna have to put a lot of filler in. I figured why waste more uh, filament reprinting this? I'll just use some filler and go around and fill in all these cracks and let it dry and then sand it down. And if you can sand this outside, that would be really good because this stuff leaves a really, really fine red dust. Make sure you're wearing a mask when you do it. Now we're going to get ready for some paint, and this is just some Vallejo basic skin tone with some flow enhancer just, you know, to be able to make it so that it will pass through the airbrush. The straight uh, acrylic won't. And I'm using one of these uh, sort of container airbrushes so that I don't uh, have to keep refilling the little cup kind. And I'm really happy with it as I go through it. The problem is when it dries, it looks very, very, very orange. And as you can see, like she got a bad spray tan. So I mix up some new flesh tone that I'm happy with and I go over it with a brush and it looks a lot better. And the cool thing is some of that orange shows through and it gives it a nice mottled look. Now we're gonna work on the eyes. And the great thing about Vallejo paint, you don't usually have to give it two coats, but you know, you are going with white over this uh, flesh tone and I probably will have to go over and give it one more coat. So sometimes, yes, another coat's necessary. A lot of times with this stuff, it isn't. I really love this paint. It goes on so thick. Even there, you can see with just one coat, it's not too bad, but it will need another. Now, since I'm using the white, I'm going to go ahead and paint all the things that need to be white and I'm doing her creepy little teeth there, and I'm looking at those and seeing definitely I'm gonna need another coat there as well. So the lips, red. Now, this doesn't need another coat. You can see how this Vallejo paint goes on. It's nice and thick, and it just coats things very, very well. Uh, again, we're putting red over a flesh tone. Now, this is where you might be saying, what? are you doing? <laughs> green, green eyes. Now, I looked at a lot of different references, and there's tons of different movies. Some they're bluer, some they're greener. I like the green, so I went with green. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just keep tinting this green with white and adding all these little sort of little dots, these little shapes to give it that sort of modeled look that I saw in a lot of the references. And again, you're trying to do it where you're not sort of creating a pattern, you're smudging things around, 
and I'm going lighter, lighter, creating different, different shapes, and I'm starting to get more and more happy with it. I'm adding some almost white here, and then I'm going to just sort of smudge it around and give it that little sort of eye look, and I am really, really happy with how this is looking. Again, it still is going to need some work. But as you can see, as we progress through this, like anything that you're painting, it takes a little time for everything to start coming together. So here I went dark around the eyes a little bit. I added the pupils, I added some black, and they look a lot better. Now it's time to add some of those rosy cheeks to our super creepy Annabelle doll. And for that, I'm using a sort of a dry brush technique, but with a cotton ball. And it's kind of funny, right? I'm applying her makeup with a cotton ball. And I'm just going through and smudging it around. And, you know, again, it looks kind of weird. Everything looks kind of too clean. And we're going to fix that later on. Because here I'm starting to add some of the distressed look things. I'm, I'm adding black and brown into these areas. Again, looking at the reference and seeing how things are done. Now, I'm using a dry brush technique here, a little bit more paint on it, and then I, I get the paint off and I dry brush it around to blend it a little bit more. Now, could I have used an airbrush? Yes, but I didn't want it to look, you know, super airbrushy and super clean. I wanted it to have that grimy sort of horror look. And I'm gonna be perfectly honest with you, I suck with an airbrush and I technically probably would not have been able to do it with an airbrush very, very well. I can paint something with an airbrush like I did earlier, like you just blanket paint it, but I am not good at actually like getting details in with a airbrush. It's something I need to work on. So here is when you're painting, you know, you just have to keep working on it. Uh, I, I'm trying a little water here. I'm not super happy with it. I'm drying it off and then I'm feathering it. I'm creating a dry brush technique. I'm going to back to a little bit more paint, a little bit more dry brush, just to sort of get that smoky look that Annabelle has in her eyes. And again, I am, you know, so far super happy with this is looking, but it looks too clean. It looks too new. Again, looking at a lot of the references, it's pretty dirty. So I use a, you know, mixture that I usually use for certain things, but I yellowed this up a bit. It's got some uh, yellow uh, umber. It's got some browns, uh, some warmer browns, and then some water. And you can see I'm just patting it on with a cloth, moving the stain around. It pretty much is like a wash and really yellowing that up to give it that creepy look. And don't forget, add that weathering to the other colors too. So I put some on the lips, I put some on the rouge, and you can see now it's starting to look like this aged, worn doll, where when it was just this you know, skin tone, it looked a little bit strange. Now we need to go in and get those teeth because the teeth are you know, super uh, clear and bright and we need to tint those back add some of that yellow add some of that brown to really get those going we took a little break and i did her nails <laughs> from the face and i did the same wash onto the hands again I try to do the weathering all in one shot so I have the same tone that I'm using across the whole piece because then it really helps tie it together. Now what would Annabelle be without her classic white dress? And I got this off Etsy from a, you know, just a great maker. They actually sew these things up and the links of course will be in the description. But we need a body. So I wasn't sure how to do this. I've never made a doll body before so i found some foam in walmart and i went ahead and just started gluing it up to you know give it the sort of shape of a body and i know it doesn't look like a shape of a body but when you put it in the dress and it's all covered up uh, it's going to work just fine i took away some of the corners so it wouldn't look like it had uh, edges to it and now it was time to put the shoulders on i wasn't sure how to do this but then I remembered foam work. I use rubber cement and this stuff works great. And how it works is you put some on one piece and then you put some on the other piece. You let it dry. And when you put those two things together, that is not coming apart. I was really surprised at how strong this thing was once it was on there. It was staying. I was very, very happy. So I'm doing a little test fitting here and making sure things are going to be working out the way I want them to. I did one a little earlier, but I just sort of wanted to see it with it glued on. Very, very happy.
So here's how I made the arms. I got some foam tubing at Lowe's. This is to wrap pipes in. And I went ahead and did the same technique by putting the super glue on all pieces where it was going to touch, let them dry, and then added them. And again, same thing for her legs. Now, if I had to do this part over, I would put the legs a little bit further apart, but when the dress is over them, it is not noticeable at all. Okay, so now I'm just cutting a V out of the middle here so that the body can bend really easily so she can sit up. And now I'm going to use armature wire, which I've always wanted to use, to make it so when I bend the arms, they stay. And this is, uh, I think, 16 gauge armature wire. And again, all the links will be in the description below or around my website, 3dprintedprops.com. You can see how it leaves them bendy. And I'm just going to find, I found this on the floor, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and spray it in. And I figure that will hold it just fine. You know, why not? And now both arms are set. Now, how am I going to get the head on? I you know, really struggled with this and I decided magnets. So those really super strong magnets, I glued one square one to the head and then I glued one over onto the body. Now I wanted the eyes to really be glossy and glassy. So I went ahead and mixed up some epoxy and I'm using a, it's a clay former, but it really works well with the epoxy because it doesn't stick to it and they're easy to clean. And I'm just adding this epoxy on and it sort of flattens out on its own and it will give it this super sort of like glass eye look. So when it catches the light, again, it looks even creepier. I am just so happy with how this is turning out. So I printed out a reference and I went ahead and started painting on the eyelashes. Believe it or not, I was super nervous about this because, you know, I've got a fairly steady hand, but I wanted them to look nice and, and really, uh, I think they're an integral part to the creepiness of the doll. And now we're going to go ahead and do the other side. And when we're close up like this, you can really see how that weathering really is giving this face tons of character. And I put more of the weathering where it would occur, in the cracks. So in the cracks of the nose, under the cheeks, under the jowls. Now we're going to be doing some eyebrows. This is the third time I tried this eyebrow. I had to wipe it off each time, but I am actually happy with how they turned out. What I'm not happy with is how clean this dress looks. The doll is super worn. This dress needs to be distressed. So I made some tea and I soaked it in it for about 20 minutes. And then I threw it in the dryer for about three cycles on like super hot with a bunch of towels in it to sort of get it a beat up look. But it still needs a little bit more wear. So this is that Tamiya uh, dry rub. I scraped a little of the black and brown out. And now just with my fingers, I'm working it into, the, again, the areas you would see where sort of the seams around the neck, uh, I'm using my hands to make it look very natural, and I'm just spreading it around. Now, again, this would probably be the most worn area if someone was dragging the doll and the skirt was on the floor. So I'm really working it in there. Again, more in the seams and on the wrists where, you know, a little girl would be playing with it. And creating this, this wear pattern, really, all it does is it helps sell the effect. And as you can see, it's yellowed. We've got these little scrapes and all these little uh, wear marks on it. It just really, really sells the piece. Now it's time for the legs. And I may have cut that leg a little short, but again, with the dress, you know, I'm looking for it when it's sitting down and how it's going to look. And uh, I'm, you know, really happy with it. I'm probably going to put some socks on it later, but I just wanted to see how these looked. And now it's hand time. Now I struggled with this quite a bit. Uh, I had made sure I cut that to the right length so that when the arm is pulled down, the fabric, you can definitely see it looks pretty cool. But how to do it? Duct tape. That's what I landed on. And guess what? It works fantastic. I mean, it holds that hand on super well. Uh, I can move it around. Uh, I can bend it with the armature. So I went ahead and said, yeah, and did the other hand. And <laughs> For agonizing over that, it was just so simple, I couldn't believe it. Now it's wig time, and this, this is really the thing that makes this thing come alive. Uh, I, I'm getting more and more excited as I'm talking about this in the video, but, you know, I'm you know, a huge horror fan, so this is just freaking me out. I am so happy. Uh, but her bangs were too long. 
So uh, I did my best impression of a three-year-old cutting their own hair. Uh, well, that's maybe too young, but a five-year-old cutting their own hair and really started scrapping into this thing and having fun with it. And I was thinking, how am I going to get this thing to stay on? And I didn't want to glue it in case I needed to repaint something. So I just uh, went ahead and rolled up some duct tape, stuck it to the head, pushed down, and that thing was going nowhere. Now, if you had double-sided tape, you could probably use that too. Now I'm going to go ahead again and use that dry rub to really work the hair to make it look more dirty, more worn, not so clean and glossy. And super happy with it, getting ready to put it all together. So here Annabelle is in all her glory sitting in the chair. Now, if you're wondering what that Raggedy Ann doll is, if you're a fan of the Conjuring movies and of Annabelle, you know that the actual Annabelle, because all those are based on true stories, was a Raggedy Ann doll. So I thought it would be funny to have my Annabelle holding on to her own little Raggedy Ann doll. Now, if, yes, I had to do things over again, and I probably will reprint the hands anyway, as my wife said when she saw her, it is crazy scary, but she has man hands. And according to Seinfeld, yes, she has man hands. I printed them way too large. I printed the head at 120% because I wanted this to be bigger, the shoulders at 120%, and the hands at 120%. I would probably print the hands at probably 90% to make them a little bit smaller. But other than that, I love this thing. I probably won't even reprint it. I think it looks even creepier with big hands, but hey, that's just me. So again, if you want to print this out yourself, go ahead and head over to my site, 3dprintedprops.com, and you can also go to the projects list over there and in the description and see all the materials I used to build Annabelle. All right, guys, have a great Halloween. I want to thank you for watching this video, and I'll see you back at the next one.